Good morning. It's been a while. I hope lockdown's going okay for you. I know it's difficult for just about everybody, especially certain groups, the supporting staff, shall we say, from fire services, ambulance, police, alcohol sales, people. I'm currently working from home. I haven't been furloughed as such, as in I've not been reduced to 80% salary. So I'm just about doing the same job, but from home. And it's not the best, if I'm honest. I want to get back to work anyway. So, in light of the fact that we can't get out taking any photographs in the world, Lynn Mark and I have decided to have a meet-up. Where are we? I can't see them. That's because Lynn, who's from Yorkshire, is over that way at this moment. And Mark, who's not from Yorkshire, unfortunately for him, is over there somewhere. So it's a, a virtual meetup, which is all we could manage at this time. And we decided to give each other three questions to answer. So Lynn, question one for you. What is the currency of Mongolia? <laughs> it's a joke, unless you know it. If there was another genre of photography you'd like to try, what would it be and why would you like to try it? If I had to choose another genre, I'm fairly confident it would be newborn and maternity. Oh, that's sun. The skill set involved in a high quality maternity or newborn shoot is just out of this world. I did think about dabbling in it at one point and life just got in the way, so I didn't. It's just awesome. And I would say it's 50% the shoot and 50% on the processing, the processing skills those uh, newborn photographers have is just out of this world. Abs absolutely out of this world. So yes, newborn and maternity, possibly not the best subjects for me, seeing as I do have a bit of an aversion to people and particularly to kids. <laughs> so maybe in another life, yes, newborn and maternity. Morning Mark, hope it's uh, going well your side of the uh, country, in Lancaster, yeah? Lancashire, Lanco, wherever you live. So I've got a question for you. Now I know you like landscape photography and you've done off-camera flash photography, modelling. What other genre of photography would you like to do, given the chance? And why would you choose to do that? Hmm, good question, that actually. What other genre of photography would I want to try that I haven't done? Do you know what? I've been thinking lately, uh, fine art, architectural photography. I was watching a couple of tutorials on YouTube the other day of this guy that was doing it. Now he had all the fancy kit with the tilt shift lens and stuff and I ain't got any of that. But he was doing black and white fine art, architectural photography and it was brilliant. I thought, I've got to try that. I mean obviously you've got to get the right subject. It can't be just a, a picture of a a regular house well, I suppose it could if you're going to practice but yeah fine art black and white fine art photography of architectural stuff now, I'd love to get my hands on a tilt shift lens Fuji don't make a tilt shift lens so I can't hire one but yeah fine art architectural photography something about that just appeals the, it's probably the shape of the building geometric shapes and hard shapes, squares, triangles, stuff like that. So yeah, I think architectural, I'm gonna mush that up, architectural landscape photography. Now I don't know of any famous fine art photographers that do architectural stuff. That's a little bit of research that I need to do. There might be some books out there I can pick up. Wow, this motorway is really noisy, but so yeah. I think that, that'll do me. So question two Lynn. If you could spend a day with any other photographer, past, present, male, female, 
from anywhere in the world that's ever lived or is currently living. Who would you choose and why would you choose them? That would have to be Neil Burnell. Um, you know I'm really into my seascape photography, particularly my minimal seascape photography, and Neil's work just blows me away. I'd love to spend a day with him getting to sorry getting a better insight into how he sees an image and then how he post processes because his processing is just a league above i can kind of get there but i probably do it in a very convoluted way so yes it would be neil vanell for me well mark question number two if you could spend a whole 24 hours with another photographer, historic, contemporary, any genre, any nationality, who would you choose and why would you choose them? Uh, right, who would I like to spend a day with, past or present? Now, that's a tough question that because there's been so many amazing photographers in the past and there's some amazing photographers that will live in the present uh, someone like i kind of like to spend the day with sean tucker he just he just seems a nice guy but that's not my choice that's that's just one person i think and it's maybe a bit of a cliche but i think the person i probably would like to spend a day with is ansel adams more because of, re of late I've been picking, or been using, I've picked up using film, you know, 35 millimeter film, and he used film, it, was, it wasn't digital and it was all black and white. So we, in colour, you have the benefit of seeing the scene with the colour when you've got a beautiful sunrise, you get all them colours, but when you're shooting in black and white, well you don't see that. So you're having to look at the light, the way the light lands on the, uh, on the scene, the way it lights the scene. So I think you need a different mindset when you're shooting black and white. And particularly maybe with large format like he shot. I think it'd be interesting to see his process, the way he assesses a scene, the way he composes the scene. What time of the day he thinks is the best time of the day. Yeah, I think Ansel Adams would be a, a good choice for any particular, particularly for those landscape photographers. Uh, although there has been many more amazing landscape photographers out there. I think a few people might consider Ansel Adams as the the first one, the first famous one maybe. But yeah, I think Ansel Adams is a, is a good choice. Just to see his process, see how he went about setting up his shots. Using these large, massive, large cameras. Amazing stuff and we're lucky with little point and shoots and phones these days. So yeah. So... Third and final question for you, Lynn. What piece of advice would you give your younger photography self? If you could go back, have a word with yourself and say, what would that be? Oh, that's an easy one, that. Yes, <laughs> I'd tell myself strongly, don't do it. Go and take up a slightly less expensive hobby. Because if you do photography, you'll never have any money ever. What you don't what you don't spend on gear because you will start to suffer from gear acquisition syndrome you will spend on trips and going away <laughs> oh, no in all seriousness it would be shoot for yourself don't take any notice of what anybody says when you start out go out there have fun enjoy it get everything out of your system the hdr the high key, the ICM, the spot colour, get it all out of your system and then once you've done that then start looking for critique on your images, find a genre that you're really comfortable with. By going out and enjoying yourself initially you will find what genre you like doing. It took me a little while but I finally flipped from motorsport into landscapes. And it just takes one moment in time to figure out what it is you want to do. So yes, shoot for you is my piece of advice. 
So Mac, final question for you. If you could travel back and give yourself one piece of advice when you started out on your photography journey, what would that be? So, what bit of advice would I give myself if I could travel back in time? There's quite a bit, actually. A lot of the stuff that, as you've been doing it for years, you realise it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's things like you know, who you're shooting for, who you're trying to please. You're pleasing yourself, or you're trying to please other photographers and stuff like that. Uh, but that's not my answer. My answer is, if I could go back in time, I'd say to myself, tidy yourself up, you scruffy sod. Uh, but yeah, I think I would tell myself, don't worry about the equipment. The gear really doesn't matter. It's the idiot that's behind the camera that makes all the difference in the world. Don't worry about the gear, don't worry about getting the next best thing. I suffered from that when I, in the early days, really quite badly. Got myself into some debt, buying this stuff. I never really used it, it was a waste of money. Ended up selling it all. You don't need one camera, one lens to start, learn the craft, and then start looking at getting equipment that you think will benefit you. Not because you think it's nice and shiny and new, but because it's going to benefit you. Like, like I mentioned in my previous answer about architectural photography, a tilt shift lens would actually be spot on, but do you need it? No, not really. You can correct all that kind of stuff. Uh, merging verticals and stuff like that in post-production. So yeah, I would tell myself, wake yourself up, Get yourself a, a camera, one lens, don't worry about the equipment, go out there and just shoot. Shoot the living daylights out of it. And that's the end of this collaboration vlog. What we'll do, I'll pop links below to Lynn's video in which you can see my answers and also pop a link below to Mark's channel. So you can also see what answers I gave. Nothing surprising, I suspect. So, take care of yourself, especially during these uncertain times. We will get through it. We will. And before you know it, you'll be sat on top of a mountain with a glorious sunset, taking photographs and having an absolute ball of a time. So, see ya.